And underneath of that, under probability, put this little subheading. We have two different types of probabilities. We have theoretical probability, and we have what is called experimental probability. Anybody know the difference in those two? Theoretical probability is mathematically, mathematically, what should happen. Okay, when you do it by numbers, mathematically crunching the numbers. Experimental probability is what really happens when you do the experiment. An example of that an example of that would be this. Theoretically, if I flip a coin ten times, what is the probability of me flipping? How many out of ten should be heads if you flip a coin? Five. Five, right? Because it should be equal. Five out of ten, or one half of the time, the probability is getting heads. That's theoretical. Okay, that is what should happen. Now, I'm going to do it 10 times, and we'll see if the experimental matches up with that. You count it. What's that? One, one for one. Oops, one for two. One for three. One for four. Two for five. Three for six. Two for seven, three for eight, three for nine, and three for ten. Experimentally, the probability that I got an eight ahead was actually three out of ten. Okay, that's what really happened experimentally. Now, here's the gist, okay? If you do a problem enough times, if you do the experiment enough times, See how this is kind of, that's kind of a long ways off. I mean, 3 out of 10 is nowhere close to really 5 out of 10. When you think about the percentage, that's a 50, that's a 30%, whatever it is. But I can guarantee you, if I did this experiment 100 times, I would get closer to that 1 out of every 2 times than this is. And if I did it a million times, it would be very, very, very incredibly close given all that thing. I should look and see if there's a website that will do the probability. Okay, given enough time, experimental, uh, experimental probability will catch up to theoretic probability if it doesn't match up right away. Okay, but this is what's supposed to happen, this is what does happen. Eventually, they will meet or get awful close. How do you know that? Because that's the reason lotteries survive. That's the reason gambling boats survive. Okay, those places, those pay, places know the theoretical probability of what they have to pay out to make money and give whatever. And, you know, somebody's going to go in there and win a million. It's like a lot. Will somebody win the million dollars? Yes. Okay. If you base your whole probability on that one guy winning the lottery and that was the only person you looked at and said, oh, well, the probability is 100% or one out of one. It's one. You're going to win. Okay. But that's not really what it is. You'd have to, you'd have to take a bigger sample space. You'd have to take a million people, ask them how many won the million dollars. And then you're going to start getting close to what the theoretical probability is, which is astronomically not in your favor in case you want to know. You know I wouldn't uh, go play the lottery. If you're looking to make a lot of money, I don't think I'd go that route. But who knows? Anybody know anybody that's won the whole thing? Wow, out of all I the I won a lottery for a uh, game. Yeah, a that's it. So, 
Well, it's a little different when you go buy raffle tickets and the pool is only 100 or 200 or even 1,000 pickles. I mean, your probability of one out of 1,000 is a whole lot better than your probability out of one out of 340 some odd million. Somebody once said, somebody once said, it's, it, there's a higher probability of you finding a million dollars than there is of you actually winning a million dollars, which I don't know if that's true or not.